Hey guys and welcome to Hana Gastro. So in today's video we'll be exploring what is an international normalized ratio also commonly known as an INR blood test. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of the INR blood test itself, let's talk a little bit about what you can expect when your doctor orders this test for you. So the INR blood test is a simple test that can be done at your closest laboratory. No special preparation is needed for the INR blood test, which means you don't have to fast so you can eat and drink as usual before the test. During the test, a blood sample will be collected from you, which means a needle will be inserted into a vein, usually in your arm, to draw out some blood into a blue top or a citrate blood tube. This blood is then sent to a laboratory where it is analyzed and resulted. So what is an INR blood test? So an INR blood test is a measure used to determine how long it takes for blood to clot. It is commonly used to monitor patients who are taking anticoagulant medications, such as warfarin, which are prescribed to prevent blood clots in the body. The test ensures that blood is not too thin, which could lead to bleeding, or too thick, which could lead to clotting. So why do doctors order an INR blood test? So doctors order an INR blood test, particularly if you are taking blood thinning or anticoagulant medications like warfarin. But here are some of the most common reasons this test is ordered. Number one, we have the monitoring of anticoagulant therapy. So if you are on warfarin or similar anticoagulants, like acenocumerol or fenindion, the INR test is crucial to ensure your blood is clotting within a safe and effective range. The goal is to prevent your blood from clotting too quickly, which could lead to strokes, deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism, or too slowly, which could lead to excessive bleeding. Doctors may also order this test to diagnose bleeding disorders. So if you have unexplained bleeding or bruising, an INR test can help to diagnose bleeding disorders like hemophilia or von Willebrand disease by assessing how well your blood clots. The third reason doctors may order this test is to evaluate liver function. So since the liver produces clotting factors, an INR test can help assess liver function. Abnormal INR levels may indicate liver disease or damage which affects the production of these clotting factors. Another reason this test is ordered is before surgery. So if you are scheduled for surgery, your doctor might order an INR test to ensure that your blood is clotting within a safe range to reduce the risk of excessive bleeding during the procedure. And the last reason doctors order an INR blood test is to assess your risk of stroke or clotting. So if you have conditions such as atrial fibrillation, a mechanical heart valve, or history of blood clots, the INR test can help manage your risk of stroke or clotting by adjusting your anticoagulant medication. So now that we know why doctors order this test, let's take a closer look at some of the normal ranges of INR. So the international normalized ratio, or the INR blood test, tells you how long it takes for your blood to clot. A test called the prothrombin time, or PT, actually measures how quickly your blood clots. The average time range for blood to clot is about 10 to 13 seconds in a normal healthy adult. The PT results can be expressed as an INR to standardize the results. So if you are not taking any blood thinning medicines such as warfarin, the normal range of your results for your prothrombin time will be 10 to 13 seconds and this expressed as an INR is 0.8 to 1.1. The easiest way to remember this is the INR in a normal healthy adult is usually around 1. So as you can see, 1 falls into the ballpark of 0.8 to 1.1. So for those who are on anticoagulant therapy, the therapeutic range is usually between 2 and 3. 
so an INR of 2 and 3 for those on anticoagulant therapy. So what do abnormally high INR results mean? So if your INR test is above your target range, it means that your blood is clotting too slowly and that there is an increased risk of bleeding. So in severe cases, bleeding could occur without any apparent injury, such as in the brain, in cases of intracranial hemorrhages, in the GI tract, or in other vital organs. So what are the possible causes of a high INR? Number one is an overdose of anticoagulants. So taking too much warfarin or other anticoagulants can cause your INR to rise, leading to an increased risk of bleeding. Number two is liver disease. So the liver produces clotting factors, and so if it is damaged or diseased, it may not produce enough, resulting in a higher INR. Number three is a vitamin K deficiency. So vitamin K is essential for clotting factor production, and a deficiency can lead to a high INR. Number four is drug interactions. So certain medications such as antibiotics, antifungals, or other drugs can interact with warfarin and can increase INR levels. Number five is medical conditions. So conditions such as congestive heart failure, certain cancers or other diseases can impact clotting and raise INR levels. And number six is alcohol consumption. So excessive alcohol intake can interfere with how warfarin is metabolized by the liver, leading to a higher INR. So the most important thing to remember here is that an abnormally high INR means that our blood is clotting too slowly, which means in turn that there's an increased risk of bleeding. So now let's talk a little bit about abnormally low INR results. So if your INR test result is below your target range, it means that you are at increased risk of a blood clot, leading to conditions like deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, stroke, or heart attack. So the possible causes for a low INR is number one, an underdose of anticoagulants. So taking too little warfarin or missing doses can result in lower INRs, reducing the medication's effectiveness in preventing clots from appearing in the body. So number two is a high vitamin K intake. So as mentioned in the previous slide, vitamin K plays a crucial role in blood clotting. So consuming foods high in vitamin K, such as leafy green vegetables like kale, spinach, or lettuce, or taking too many vitamin K supplements can lower your INR by promoting clotting in the body. Number three is drug interactions. So certain medications, such as some anti-epileptics, birth control pills, or vitamin K-rich supplements can interact with warfarin, leading to a lower than normal INR. Number four is genetic factors. So some individuals have genetic variations that cause their bodies to metabolize warfarin differently, which can lead to a lower than normal INR. And number five, we have changes in health or diet. So changes in your diet, weight, or overall health can impact how your body responds to warfarin, potentially lowering your INR. So the important thing to remember from the slide is that when your INR result is lower than normal, it means that you are at increased risk for developing a blood clot, which means you'll be more prone to deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolisms developing, strokes, or even heart attacks. So the take-home message from this presentation. So as we have just seen, maintaining your INR within the recommended range is essential to balancing the prevention of blood clots and the risk of bleeding. Regular monitoring and close communication with your healthcare provider are key to managing your INR effectively. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found the information in this presentation very valuable and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with some of your friends in the medical community. 
who you think may find this video helpful. So I've also just signed up for Buy Me A Coffee. So if you want to encourage me to do even more or to say thanks for all the free information you've received on my channel today, you can click down in the description box below to buy me a coffee. Take care and have a wonderful day further. Bye for now.